I, I don't like that this happened on our watch. When we started homesteading just about over two years ago now, we would have never thought we would be all the way of where we are now. Homesteading brings so many great moments. We've been able to build such a beautiful garden, raise chickens, raise our own meat in the form of chicken and pig, all on our own property, doing everything that we can to make these things a possibility. The unfortunate thing when it comes to homesteading though, is that not everything is pretty, and unfortunately some things are just straight up sad. So let's talk about maybe our most unproud moment. I've been avoiding making this video, but eventually you guys were gonna figure out or have to know everything that's happened and it's sad. Um, I'm, I'm gonna brace you guys for it. You might not like it. So for those of you guys who have followed along, you guys know that we recently just brought home two baby goats to our property. This is maybe now a little over two weeks ago where we did this. And when we brought them here, it was such an exciting time for us. We were super excited to be able to add a new animal that we've never had any experience with, but we have done some research and reached out to a few people about goats. It was two baby Nigerian dwarf goats, and we wanted to put them on our farm to hopefully breed them out to eventually be able to use the milk and have the dairy so that we don't have to go out and get raw milk from a different farm anymore and being able to build to our self-sufficiency that we have here. And when we first brought them here, it seemed like everything was going really good. We built a shelter for them where we were able to revamp our chicken tractor, where we were able to make it where there was no wind gust coming in, adding wood all along the sides to make sure that it was more barnish, where it ended up being more like a goat barn than a chicken tractor, and we did all this work to make sure that we could bring them to us and make sure that we had a nice secure place where they could live, make sure that they handle our winter temperatures okay, and it seemed like it was gonna work out really good for us. We noticed struggles the first few days when we brought them home. They were about a little under three weeks old, so they weren't weaned off completely from the mom. So we had to feed them by bottle, which at first was not going very well. We tried a lot the very first and second day to get them to take from that bottle. They took better the second day, but basically by the third day, these goats were taking the bottle just fine. We finally got over that learning curve. That was definitely our first struggle and fear of like, what are we gonna do if these goats do not eat? But we were able to get past that, which we were very thankful for because it was making us a little nervous. And then from there, unfortunately, it's only been about three days, and we started to hit our coldest temperatures we might have for the whole entire year, of course, on our first week of having these goats. From that point, we went back to their shelter. I revamped it up some more, added some more wood, we ended up getting some really big things of straw for them. At one point we had a little wood box inside there, inside the shelter. So it was like a double shelter. So they can go inside there to make sure they can kind of stay more closed in and warmed. And then we figured let's use the straw bales and we made a little shelter inside the hut of the straw bales because that's thicker, it's gonna keep them warmer. And we did a little hut out of those inside of our barn to keep them nice and warm, and it felt like everything was still gonna be okay. I wasn't absolutely terrified for them. They actually already did quite well in a few temperatures that were getting around zero degrees Fahrenheit here for two days in a row, and this was adding on to that afterwards, so it seemed like everything was still going good. They started taking from the bottle from us even better. We were starting to be able to feed them more and more, which was good because we were afraid since it was cold if they weren't eating enough, but we were able to get more food into them. And on top of that, we knew that we started needed to get some kind of mineral for them, so we started introducing a little bit of a mineral into their diet. And I also went ahead and got hay for them because I wanted them to be able to snack and eat on something else other than us going out to get them milk, just in case we were a little fearful that maybe, oh no, did they have enough milk or not for the day, that they had something else they could still eat. And we were finally just getting past all the cold weather days, so it just seemed like, all right, we were getting past the week of really cold weather, and it seems like we're gonna be just fine. Now we can kind of get more adjusted with these goats and figure out our plan of what we're gonna be doing for them in the spring. Well, that's when the thoughts of future plans for them changed dramatically for us in just one night. I got a call while I was at work from my wife and I almost instantly knew that when I saw the phone call coming through, she almost never just calls me straight up while I'm at work. She'll send me a text or something. So when I saw my phone ringing, I almost instantly just had this very gut reaction of this cannot be good and I did not 
almost want to answer it because I just never know what's going to be on the other end of that phone call and I was right. It wasn't something that I really wanted to hear. <sighs> she informed me that our one goat was already passed and found not moving inside of our goat barn and the other one just looking off and sick. Her neck was being funny and she was starting to foam a little bit at the mouth and would not take from a bottle and she was just in absolute distress and I can only imagine. Um, so while I was at work I did the best that I could do which was try to look up and see what could we do, is there any vets in the area that she could go to and then she was already worrying about finding a vet to take the other goat to to see if we could at least get her to survive whatever was going on. What I did during that time is I actually contacted ABC Acres who is over here on YouTube who deals with a whole bunch of goats. He has a lot of goat experience. Kind of just called him telling him everything that we have going on right now. Told him what was going wrong with our goat. Told him our setup we have, what we've given to them, our temperatures that we have going on here. And let him know everything just to see like what what's going on. Is there something that we did wrong? And I let him know like hey we, we can take it. Um, I'm not happy about it and I'm not in the right mindset at the moment but if there is something that we are doing wrong just let us know if there's something that we did we need I just need to know um, sucks when you're responsible for a living thing and you take that responsibility very seriously and then something happened like this because you'll always kick yourself thinking like what did I do wrong is it something that I did and unfortunately Chelsea drove with our four kids with our sick goat to go to the vet. They basically, by the time they got to go see a doctor at the vet, it was about two minutes of them being checked up and the goat ended up passing right there. And this is a hard time for us. Um, we are really uh, kicking ourselves. And if you look behind me, it's been probably now a week and a half, two weeks since this has happened. I really haven't just had it in me to come out here and try to clean any of this stuff up. It just reminds me too much of those little guys. It was only nine days, nine days, and there's so much in our heads of what happened. Uh, our daughter supposedly thinks she saw little worms kind of crawling around their eyes. Um, it wasn't something that either of us witnessed, so we're not positive about that. Uh, the vet let us know as we talked to her and explained to her everything that we have done. And one of the main things that she could think of as we kind of explained everything is that they were maybe being underfed a little bit. Um, which sucks because that's something that we can change. But based on what we looked at for the goats and how much to feed them, we felt like they were maybe getting off by just a few ounces a day. And based on what she was telling us, it might have been more like six to eight ounces, which could be a big difference. And it just, there's not a better word for it. Uh, I, I don't like that this happened on our watch. and. Our first time having goats, it makes it a little bit harder to want to just go back and just do it right away, to be honest. And they were bringing us just so much joy. Uh, the whole family was absolutely loving them and they were just so cute and adorable. And that's not the reason that we got them, that's just the bonus of having them. And did we tell ourselves and have we told ourselves right away after that happened that like, hey, is this homesteading thing for us? I don't know. Have we told ourselves, like, are we ever going to have goats again? Yeah, we were telling ourselves, maybe not. <sighs> and now after a couple weeks of this kind of going on now, do we want to go back and get them again? Yeah, we do want to get them again. And I hope that we can learn from this and see if it was anything that we knew that went on. I don't think it was the cold temperatures, but I'm not going to rule it out. I'd be a little shocked if it was how much we were feeding them too. But if they were being underfed and it's cold, I mean, that easily could put a part into it. Could it have been a weird parasite or disease that they got? Yes, that could be too. We, I mean, all those things could be a possibility and it sucks that we don't have the closure for it. Um, I'd rather just have the answer in front of me and be like, hey, like you screwed up, this is what happened. I won't feel good about it. I still won't feel good about it. I mean, I just don't. I just, it feels, um, <sighs> just, just feels sad. I, I, I can't word it any other way. It's a very big punch in the face, and it's just a little bit of a, it just kind of knocks the wind out of you, to be honest, it just sucks. We feel bad here. It's been, it's been a little bit of a rough few weeks. 
Uh, for you guys who follow along, you might know that we just lost one of our roosters. That happened probably about four or five days before that. Losing a couple animals under our supervision and our watch, uh, we take full responsibility. We understand that it could be something that we have done here and we got to be better. Um, that's, that's quite simple. The main thing about it is that we got to be better. I don't really have much more words for anything. Um, I know that there might be people that are going to come at us in the comments for this and that's part of it. That's part of us being on YouTube and that's what's going to happen when we share the things that we have going on. But I want to take this last bit of time for this video to kind of just do a nice little farewell off to CC and Rocky. Although we didn't have much time with them, the time that we had was a very special nine days that we are not going to forget. I just want to put our few moments that we were able to share with them and kind of just give them a nice little farewell here. So that's about all I can say. Oh my God. <laughs> the new goat whisperer. We're playing them wherever they want to be. <laughs> Do not the, stop trying to eat me! <laughs> I'm not. I, I don't have the oh, move. Oh, zipper. Hey, Mike, get your ear. Now. Did you see my ear poking out? But. After the milk, it's the beard. Buddy, stop it. Okay, okay, big guy, okay.